I've made a few videos on the EIC accelerator, but the EIC two days before the deadline in June 2023, they have nuked the entire application website. So what happened was in 2021, the EIC thought we are going to reinvent the application process. Instead of having this PDF document using the funding and tenders portal, we are going to now have our own website, which has this AI technology, this innovative European Innovation Council, AI technology and all the applications are going to be there. Honestly, when I first started doing applications for that and I had to change my applications from 2020 to 2021, at first I thought it was horrible, but after a while I really got used to it. I actually started liking it because as a consultant, as a writer, you're going to be very familiar with the templates and all the tips and tricks and the do's and don'ts. So I actually really liked the template in the end. It allowed me to really put on a lot more content than I usually could and I think it was very predictable. I think the best best thing the EIC has done since 2021 was to add this comment feature that the evaluators, they're going to review your application, they're going to leave comments, not because they're extremely valuable, but because now you have a conversation with the evaluators. So now it is much, much easier to have a resubmission and then to pass the step because you can actually answer to the criticism and you already know that more or less the evaluators are probably not going to read the entire application. They're just going to try try to follow the conversation between the last evaluators and then the company that is resubmitting the proposal. So that was great. But then in 2023, they spontaneously canceled the whole thing, which is kind of sad because apparently, according to an article, they already knew there's going to be contract problems three months before, but they didn't warn anyone. They didn't tell anyone. And then suddenly, and I myself had already submitted an application then, this was suddenly nuked. And now we go back to PDF documents. So let me just update everybody who's watching this, probably someone who wants to maybe apply to the EIC Accelerator, how the process looks like as of today, now is October 2023. So we still have three steps. There's still step one of the EIC Accelerator, which is a short application. It is still online because the EIC created a new website. So it is an online short application where you have to fill text boxes. You still have to do a three minute video and you still have this 10 to 11 page pitch deck. So the big differences between how it was earlier this year or let's say the last few years compared to now this step one is longer just from the text because now instead of having all these tiny 500 character boxes a thousand character boxes now we have 20,000 character boxes 10,000 character boxes and they are a little bit awkward because it's not like you have a box that is just dedicated to the developments you want to do or you have a box that is just dedicated to the market activities but you have a box that is conflating a lot of different things you have to discuss the market the competitors the technology and the innovation and the USB all in one box. It's very strange. So you have to see how you allocate the space. I would actually have preferred if they had split that up, if they had one for the competitors, one for the market. So it's a little more clean. Now it's really strange to really split that up and it's longer. So it took me significantly longer to write the step one as it would have taken me to write the step one in the previous system. So it definitely is more text. But yeah, everything else is the same. The website looks a little different, but everything is more or less the same. Step two is completely different. So so now we are back to a PDF submission. Step two is not an online platform in the sense of that you write the application or you have to enter the application text online. What it is, is you still have the normal funding and tenders portal where you just upload the application, but you still have to upload a PDF file. So this is back as it was in 2020. We're back to PDF file. They changed the format, which again, I'm not a big fan of because I don't think it is structured that well. They tried to structure it more for from an investor perspective. But I think what the EIC is missing here is that this is not really relevant for the evaluation because the evaluators in step two are not going to be the investors. They're going to be the remote evaluators. They're a little more technology focused and not necessarily business people, entrepreneurs. So what they're doing is they are starting the whole application with a company section, which is very long, which discusses customers, partners, valuation, investors, and revenues, financial health. So a lot of that stuff. So this is more or less what an investor would look for in the beginning to understand what is this company about, give me some metrics. And then it goes into the innovation and then implementation. But I think the problem with that is because they start with this, let's say, ambiguous company section, now you have a lot of parts that are just not well structured. Because I would have liked to have a customer section that is close to the USPs, for example. When I discuss the unique selling points, I explain the customers. Right now in my application, it's a little bit strange because I already have to describe the customer 
customers in one part, but then I have to describe them again in the other part. So what I'm doing is cross references between them. And there's a lot of things. For example, they also talk about the market, but the market section is going to come later. So it's a little awkward, especially if you have a company profile, it's going to touch on almost everything. But this is not a company profile. This is a business plan first and foremost. And I think it's better if it's written as a business plan. I know it is for the step three evaluation so the investors can quickly get their stuff, but maybe they can restructure that a little bit. Maybe they have a separate document just for the step three jury, or maybe even something that's going to be submitted in step three once a company gets invited. Long story short, I don't want to go too much into detail, but step three is still the same. So it's still going to be the remote interview. You use the step two submitted pitch deck, and then they're going to be invited to the interview. Maybe you were just in the interview now. As I'm recording this, this is October 4th, 2023. And right now is the interview week and the next one is going to be in January. But yes, what is actually interesting is that consultants such as myself, we are used to these radical changes. So right now, because all of these things have happened, most of the content that you can find online that is telling applicants how to apply to the ESC accelerator is obsolete. So what is interesting is that all of these changes are making companies more and more reliant on consultants, which is kind of crazy because you would think that the EIC would have a vested interest in making it easier for applicants to go through the process. But because of the lack of transparency when it comes to the types of projects they want to fund and the feedback they give, because they only advertise things like innovation, disruptive innovation, and we want to have these types of companies, but it's too broad. So everybody always thinks they can get funded, even though it's a very, very small number of companies that can actually get funded. But what is crazy is because of these changes, it's getting harder and harder and harder for individual applicants to be successful in this program. And the level of reliance of companies on consultants, which is obviously great for consultants, but it's getting higher and higher and higher. 